All right, let's do a simple problem where we're figuring out the stresses in the elements of a two-bar truss. I've got a truss here that has one bar at a 45-degree angle and the other one is horizontal. I've also got a 5,000 Newton load weight applied to the end of the truss. And I've called this element A and that's element B. The object is to find the stresses in A and B. Now, if you need uh, to calculate stresses, you have to know a cross-sectional area. Stress is force divided by area. So we're going to figure out the forces, and I've uh, assumed an area of 350 millimeters squared. Now, in problems like this, the process is the same pretty much every time. We draw a free body diagram, and then we do equations of equilibrium, or sometimes called an equilibrium analysis. So let's do that now. Now, in drawing a free body diagram, I can draw lots of different free body diagrams, even with a simple problem like this. I can do an element, I can do a joint, I can do parts of the entire structure. For this problem, I'm going to do a free body diagram of that joint right there. So I'll just write this out. I'm going to draw a free body diagram of that joint. And it's going to be very simple. There's only three forces possible here. So there's my joint. And there's 5,000 newtons. Now, I have to assume uh, directions of forces in these. Since this force is down, the vertical component of the force in A must be up. This is horizontal, so it can't make any vertical component. These are pinned on both ends, so they can only make forces along the axis of the beam. These are sometimes called two-force members or two-force uh, elements. So the vertical component of A has to be that direction, so that means the force in A must be like that. Now, I'm still guessing. I'm using my intuition to try to as assume a direction here. If I get it wrong, that's okay. What will happen when we calculate the force FA will come up with a negative number. That negative number is the mathematics way of telling you that that arrow is on the wrong end of this line. The arrow should be pointing the other way. So as long as you do the process correctly, the mathematics will tell you what the right answer is. Now, if force A has a vertical component that way, it also has a horizontal component this way. That means that it must be matched by a horizontal component in B acting the other way. So there we go. I'm going to put that in there. Again, I'm assuming a direction. I think I'm right, but if I'm not, the mathematics will tell me. If this isn't the right direction, I'll calculate an FB that's negative. That's okay. So let's try this now. Let's sum the forces in the Y direction. Okay. Sum the vertical forces. Well, there's really only two, so I know that negative 5,000 newtons plus, now negative because this is acting down, it's acting opposite my assumed uh, positive direction. This is the coordinate system I'm using. And I mostly use this one unless I have a pretty good reason to do otherwise. <coughs> so five th minus 5,000 newtons plus the vertical component of FA, so that's FA, and if that's uh, 45 degrees, then we'll call that FA sine 45 degrees, and that all has to equal zero. Another way to write this is to like this. Now sine 45 is a square root of 2 over 2. that equals, make sure I get enough uh, zeros there, so that's 10,000 newtons divided by approximately 1.414. If you do that, you get 7071.1 newtons. Okay, that's FA. Now, I don't have a lot of room on this little board, so I'm going to write my intermediate answers up here. This is my uh, storage space, I guess. So there's one. Next thing we're going to have to do is figure out the force in element B. We know A, so we've got a good start. And I'm going to erase this. 
and I'm going to leave the free body diagram there so we can refer to it. So step three is to sum the forces in the x direction. That also has to equal zero. So again, there's, there's a, uh, only two components here. So let's see, I have minus FB minus, because it's acting opposite my assumed positive horizontal direction, plus, since the component of, uh, horizontal component of FA is going to the right along with my positive, assumed positive direction, and I want the horizontal component of FA, not, not the whole thing, and that has to equal zero as well. So I know FA, let's solve for FB. All right, so it's 7071.1 newtons times the square root of 2 over 2. And this is going to turn out to be 5,000 newtons if you run through the math. Okay, there we go. We've got forces. All we have to do now is divide by areas to get stresses. So again, I'm going to erase this. So step four, the last one, to calculate sigma A and sigma B. Now this is pretty simple. Okay, that big A is the area. I've got that listed right there. And that's going to be 7071.1 newtons divided by 350 millimeters squared. Now, if you divide newtons by millimeters squared, the answer is going to come out in megapascals. If you prefer, you can convert this to meters squared. And this is, there's 1 million millimeters squared per square meter. So we're off by a factor of 10 to the 6th. Um, when we do this, we get 20.203 megapascals. Here, oops, do this right. I see I didn't do this on my... Uh, on my cheat sheet here. This is going to be 5,000 newtons. Okay, again, divided by 350 millimeters squared because I've assumed the same cross-sectional area for both elements. And this turns out to be 14.286 Pascals. There you go.